Welcome to America Reads Fun Learning Activities. We are college students who create learning activities for kids. Our fun activities are focused on reading, writing, and math. Thank you all for joining me today. My name is Shravya. In today's video, we'll be going over context clues and how to use them. To get started, let's first look at the definition of what context clues are. Context clues are clues that readers can use to guess the meaning of unknown words in a particular reading. Great, now that we know the definition of context clues, let's move on to the next step. The next step is to prepare what materials we will need for the activity. So you will need a printed version of the story which will be displayed on screen, some colored paper of your choice, some scissors, a black marker, coloring materials, and some tape or glue. Before we start using context clues to help us out when we're reading, we have to first identify a few tips and tricks on finding context clues. So take out your paper of choice and fold it in half. After you folded your paper in half, I want you to think about how an ice cube looks like. To me, I think of a square with rounded edges, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out my paper into the shape of an ice cube, like so. Great! Now that we have our paper ready for writing down our cool tips for context, let's go ahead and look at a few ways we can identify context in our readings. The first way we can find context clues are definitions. The meaning of the unknown word is sometimes defined later on in the sentence. The second way we can find context clues is through examples. The example of the unknown word is sometimes given later on in the sentence. Synonyms The meaning of the unknown word is sometimes defined later by a similar word in the sentence. Pictures can also help us guess what the meaning of the unknown word is in the reading. The last one is inference. The meaning of the unknown word can be guessed by the overall context of the sentence. The context is basically what is being talked about in the sentence. Awesome! We now know that there are five ways that we can identify context in our readings. So let's go ahead and make sure to write them down in our cool ice cube infographic. So the first one I'm going to write is definition. The second one will be example. The third one will be synonym. The fourth one will be pictures. And lastly, the fifth one will be inference. And in parentheses, we can put down the word guessing. Now, as an additional step, I'm going to go ahead and write down the words cool context tips on this ice cube so that if I ever need help, I know where to look for it. Now I'm going to go ahead and just decorate it a little bit before we go ahead and apply our tips and tricks in a fun reading to find out how we can use context clues. Take the printed story and read along with me. As you read along, make sure to take a highlighter and highlight any words that you won't know. I'll be doing the same as I'm reading. All about penguins by head first. Penguins are a group of birds. Some can live in the cold of Antarctica. They gather in flocks to stay warm. They cannot fly but use their wings to swim. They have smooth waterproof black and white feathers used for camouflage. They live half on land and half in the sea. On land, penguins use their tails and wings to balance when standing. 
They can waddle on their feet or slide on their bellies, called toboganning. Penguins can swim fast, up to 17 miles per hour. Larger penguins can dive up to almost 2,000 feet for over 20 minutes under the water. Most penguins eat krill, fish, and squid. Some penguins build a nest, and others keep their eggs warm in a brooding pouch on their feet. Both parents help with eggs and chicks. Chicks eat regurgitated fish and krill. The chicks leave their parents when they are large enough to stay warm and then form a crochet with other chicks. They grow their adult feathers and are fully grown at two to three months. Awesome job reading along. Now, did you notice that while we were reading, there were a few words that we didn't know what they meant? Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what they could actually mean. Going back to our first unknown word, we have Antarctica. But if we look at the world map, we'll know that it is a continent, or in other words, a landmass. So we know what Antarctica means. Next, we have the word flocks. Because the sentence says they gather, I think that flocks is kind of similar to a crowd. And this would be using the inference or the context of the sentence. So I'm going to say crowd. Next, we have the words wings and swim. Well, these aren't words that we don't know, but they are a bit confusing when we think about penguins because we are unsure if these arms of the penguins are actually wings. Well, they are. So we have cleared our confusion on what that meant. Next, we have the word camouflage. Now, in order to find out what camouflage means, we're going to go ahead and look at the surrounding sentence. Let's see what it says. It says that they have smooth, waterproof black and white feathers. So. Here is the example of the camouflage. So I'm guessing that this is a way that the penguins are able to conceal or hide themselves in the environment because they're able to have black and white feathers. So I'm going to write down hide as my synonym for camouflage. Next, we have this rather unfamiliar word called toboganning. Well, if we look earlier in the sentence, we are actually given an example. And it says that the penguins can waddle on their feet or slide on their bellies. Because we know that the penguins can slide on their bellies, this is referred to as toboganning. So we know what toboganning means. So we can check it off. Perfect, we only have a few more unknown words left. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the next ones are. So next, we have brooding pouch as one of the unfamiliar words. So it says in the surrounding sentence that penguins build a nest and others keep their eggs warm in a brooding pouch on their feet. So we know that the purpose of the brooding pouch is to keep the eggs warm. Because we have an example of what the brooding pouch does, we can think of it almost like a little area for the chicks to be hidden away, kind of like a kangaroo pouch. So I'm going to put the word warmth and shelter as ways for me to understand what a brooding pouch is. Lastly, we have regurgitated. Now regurgitated is an interesting word. We are not sure what it means because the surrounding sentence doesn't really tell us what it means, 
but we do know that the chicks eat regurgitated fish and krill. So this is something that means that it is able to be eaten. So I'm guessing that it is something that has to do with the ease of being able to eat something. For example, being able to cut up an apple and eat it. So I'm going to write the word ease of eating. Excellent job inferring as to what those unknown words might have meant. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the dictionary to see the actual definitions of those words and how close we were to inferring what they meant. Now with your handy dandy cool context tip infographic, you will be able to tackle any unknown word that you come across while reading. So, happy reading everyone! Thank you for learning with us today. We hope you come back and learn some more. Please like and subscribe to our channel and we will be back with more videos shortly.